hello Hugo, it's very nice to meet you. So please briefly introduce yourself and Flare Labs please. Sure, my name is Hugo Fillion, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Flare Labs. Do I look at the camera or you? Uh, just look at me. Okay, fine. Uh, my name is Hugo, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Flare Labs. Flare Labs build, ha has built the Flare blockchain. Uh, so, could you please uh, explain more characteristics about the Flare Labs? Uh, the blockchain or the company? The company and the blockchain, please. Okay. Yeah. So the company is a group of engineers uh, that work on the protocols of Flare and, and, and applications that are built on Flare. Flare as a blockchain is what we call the third generation blockchain. Uh, so if you want to think of it this way, uh, Bitcoin bought you simple transactions um, in a non-censorable and open way. Ethereum bought you logic on top of those transactions. And Flare brings you logic plus data. So being able to bring data directly onto the chain using the chain itself. So what is the goals and vision of Flare Labs in the blockchain industry? What, what's your, what are you pursuing? So our, our first fundamental goal is to bring data into blockchain in a fully decentralized way so that you can rely on it and so that the value that is relying on that data has some, essentially some notion of security. That is not something that exists today. Uh, and then our second goal is to help adoption uh, by working in ways that allow us to build technology that creates a, a better experience for users uh, such that people can build applications on Flare that are much more appealing because the current way of using applications is, is essentially very, very unfamiliar to the majority of users in the world. So I think Flare is kind of Oracle? Flare's a layer one blockchain. A layer one blockchain, yeah. oh, okay, so. Uh, Flare's so, a layer one blockchain with enshrined oracles. Okay, Yeah. so you're putting data on the blockchain? Yeah. Basically, so. We've integrated data provision capabilities oh, okay. into the blockchain itself. So, how do oracles bridge the gap between smart contracts and the real world data? Well, Can they you provide an example and a brief explanation of this? Absolutely. So, um, oracles provide data to smart contracts. Smart contracts by themselves, if you take Ethereum and you strip out data protocols, there's a relatively minimal amount of things you can do. If you strip out the data, probably the most, definitely the most used application would be Uniswap, because it doesn't rely on data. Pretty much everything you else you want to do in DeFi is data-driven, whether it's you know lending protocols, real-world assets. And certainly the most, almost everything we want to do going forward is data-driven. So, you know, KYC, AI, gaming, you know, any form of on-chain identity, all requires data. So oracles provide that, that, that data, but the the problem is that today's oracles are extremely backwards in their security guarantees. This is kind of a basic question, but uh, why did Flare choose to build as a layer one? So that we have control over fundamentally the validators, the code base, uh, and how we can secure the network. So, so how would you convince a traditional Web2 company to utilize Flare's decentralized data services? over uh, conventional data providers? Uh, well, there's no particular reason why a traditional Web2 company would use Flare's data. Right. Absolutely not. Only if they're building in Web3. Uh, so if they're building an application, we're not trying to provide a Web2 service for Web2 companies. We're trying to provide a service for Web3. Uh, or I prefer to call it blockchain because I think Web3 is a bit tacky. But we're trying to provide a, a far, far better data service in Web3 than currently exists. What significance does the Korean market have to have for Flare Labs? Why are you looking into the Korean market and why did you come to KBW? Yeah, so two reasons. One, we have a large amount of token holders here. That, that's a historical artifact of how Flare started. We distributed our token to people that held XRP and Korea is one of the biggest markets for XRP. Secondly, we're building a form of wrapped XRP which is over collateralized, so a over collateralized bridge for XRP to Flare. As there's a large amount of XRP holders here, we obviously want to engage with those XRP holders to offer them the bridge to be able to use their XRP on Flare uh, in order to create more value for themselves. Okay, so this is the last question. 
Is there any question you would like to answer, maybe? Is there any question I would like to answer? Um, I guess maybe what are our, you know, what are, what, what, what's our future vision? Okay. Could you talk about your future vision, please? Sure. So we're building, um, you know, currently data protocols that allow us to get price data onto the chain, blockchain data from other blockchains, uh, and data from Web2 onto Flare. Our next major goal is to release our version, our over-collateralized version of wrapped Bitcoin and wrapped XRP onto Flare. But then after that, our goal is to get our data from Flare to service other chains, DeFi ecosystems. And then our, our third major goal coming up is essentially the use of verifiable off-chain compute to allow people to build much more data-rich and interesting applications on Flare. It was very nice to meet you, Hugo. Very nice to meet you. It was a nice interview. For, thank you for coming to the Blog Media booth. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you.